Pascal Siakam trade talk between the Toronto Raptors and the Sacramento Kings is over. Let me repeat that. The Sacramento Kings and the Toronto Raptors are pulling out of trade talks for Pascal Siakam. According to Sean Sharania, they were deep into trade talks and now they're going to pull out. Everything is fluid. And the Sacramento Kings are deciding to pull out of the Pascal Siakam trade talks. Sources says things can be fluid, but the Kings Raptors talks are now over. And we knew the package was surrounding Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, and Davion Mitchell. Now it seems like probably draft pick compensation is what was the holdover for this. I want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. Attached is the video we made earlier discussing what a Sacramento trade could look like and what a Pascal Siakam trade to any of the other destinations that we've heard could look like. Let me hear your thoughts down below. John Sharani had just put out a report saying that the Pascal Siakam trade talks are ramping up. The Sacramento Kings and the Toronto Raptors are ramping up, are engaged in serious trade talks. Now, we know that the Hawks, Pacers, and Pistons are the other couple of teams that are interested in Pascal Siakam, but I do believe the Kings are the team that is most likely to go after Pascal Siakam because We've heard that the Kings are shopping Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, and Davion Mitchell. Guess what? Harrison Barnes, Davion Mitchell, and Kevin Herter equate to. Yes, sir. They equate to $37 million, the exact amount of money that they need to get Pascal Siakam. As you guys see, I say a first-round pick, a second-round pick, and those three players would be enough because at the end of the day, Kevin Herter is a great long-term asset. Even though they have Grady Dick, Kevin Herter can mentor Grady Dick until Grady Dick's ready to take over. And then you can flip Kevin Herter down the road. Harrison Barnes, he'll be a mentor. He, but both of those guys fit very well next to Scotty Barnes, Emmanuel Quickly, RJ Barrett, and make this team like this floor spacing little lanky team that I think they want to be. And I do believe that in, you know, it's a good opportunity for them. And for me, I think like, this is going to be a team that I, if the Kings do this trade, Kevin Herter, Davion Mitchell, and Harrison Barnes, they give up a guy, Harrison Barnes, I think they were ready to move on. They gave him the extension so they wouldn't lose him for nothing. And now they're able to flip him for something. Kevin Herter is a guy who, he's just having a down year, but he's useful and he's on a cheap deal. While Davion Mitchell is still on his rookie deal, but he was a fir- he was a lottery guy who you know hasn't really achieved his potential. He's basically an un- a defensive pass defensive pass first undersized combo guard who- that plays the two, and they don't have to give him up compensation for Pascal. And if they trade for Pascal, he's going to test free agency, but they're assuming that they get a verbal commitment from him to resign in free agency because they can only offer him the two-year max before june 30th but if you they let him test free agency and he comes back the office i believe his bird rights and they can give him the contract that he wants and they want to have a big three up here in fox demontis Sabonis, and pascal siakam my assumption is their backup plan is kyle kuzma but i think kyle kuzma might actually be more expensive in a weird way than pascal siakam because of the contract situation so i want to hear your guys's thoughts what do you guys expect? Because for me, this whole situation, I think the Kings are about to get Pascal Siakam for a pretty decent price, cheaper than what he would have gone for a year ago. While the the Raptors are going to continue to to get more wings, and I think they're going to turn into this very lanky combo, lanky two way heavy wing team that I'm very interested to see how it looks once it's put together. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. And the rest of this video is going to be what I've reported in the past. Okay? Yo, what's going on, guys? And today we want to talk about Pascal Siakam, who is expected to be traded now that OG Ananobi has been traded. I'm laying here on the beach with my girlfriend, so we're going to probably do this a little quick because I can tell 
she might not be the biggest fan of me making these videos on the beach. But let's get right into this. Talk about Pascal Siakam, who's expected to be traded. Now the teams that are interested in Pascal Siakam are the Atlanta Hawks, the Sacramento King, and the Indiana Pacers. So the report originally came from Adrian Orjanowski that the Toronto Raptors will continue to explore trades involving Pascal Siakam. Sources tell ESPN's Adrian Orjanowski. No talks, however have gained any traction with Siakam at this point. The Raptors traded OG Ananobi to the New York Knicks for RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly on Saturday. Both Siakam and Ananobi were or are eligible for free agency in 2024. The Atlanta Hawks and the Indiana Pacers and Sacramento Kings have been previously linked to Siakam. Now that the Raptors swung the trade, Moving on from OG, Precious Achua, Malachi Flynn, bringing in the native RJ Barrett, my old neighbor, Emmanuel Quickly, and a second round pick. People believe that Siakam is going to be traded. He was nearly traded to the Atlanta Hawks for a deal that centered around DeAndre Hunter. And I believe it was DeAndre Hunter, AJ Griffin, and I want to say Bardon Bardanovich. But I don't think Bogdan's involved in the deal. And I believe because they traded for RJ Barrett, I don't know if they want DeAndre Hunter. Maybe they do. I want to hear your thoughts. If you're a Raptors fan, what is your expectations at this point for a Siakam deal? What do you think is correct compensation? Now, the Hawks are still expected to be interested, as well as the Pacers and Sacramento Kings. Again, a Hawks deal would have to be probably a three-team deal because they would have to send a combination of DeAndre Hunter and Clint Capella and or Bardon, one, two of at least two of those dudes would have to either go to the Raptors or to another team that would send assets to the Raptors, basically. So that's what the Hawks are giving up. They have AJ Griffin, Kobe Bufkin, a few other young guys that there could be interest in. Now, the next one is the Sacramento Kings. A deal from them would probably center around Davion Mitchell, maybe Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, and and any other young guys that the Kings would be willing to move on from. I think the untouchables are Ke Keegan Murray, Diamante Sabonis, and Malik Monk, and De'Aaron Fox. I think everybody else would be tradable. Pacers, I could see the deal being a bit easier to expedite. Now it's 37.9. I don't know. I feel like for the Kings, it's the easiest because they have a lot of like interchangeable salaries. But... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm all for, you know, Pascal Siakam being moved. I wonder what the the actual going rate. There's a second round pick that just went for our man. And yeah, for me, I think if a second round pick is what OG went for, and he was a guy who was getting offers to go for a for two second round picks last year. I mean, two first round picks. And now he just went for one second. How much is Siakam's value depreciated is the question I'm wondering. And if you're a fan of Pascal Siakam, which I assume if you're watching this video, you probably are either because you're a Raptors fan or because you're a, a fan of the Hawks, Kings, does anybody here just straight up a Pascal Siakam fan? I don't, I don't know if anybody is. Do those exist? But let's hear the rest that I've reported on. Yo, what's going on, guys? And today we're hearing from Sham Sharania that a few teams are interested in Pascal Siakam. So as we get closer to the trade deadline, the Toronto Raptors and the Chicago Bulls are allegedly the two teams to keep an eye on, to keep tabs on as sellers. And Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster have stuck with their talented core Barnes, Pascal Siakam, and Oji Ananobi for the last three years, but they've lost three games in a row. They're 9 13. And teams believe more than ever that Pascal Siakam or Ananobi or both of them will be traded by February 8th deadline. Scotty Barnes is off limits. So under new coach Darko Ryakovich, the Raptors have hoped for a more team first, free flowing offensive style that would lead to success and there's a strong belief that Barnes, Siakam and Ananobi across every level of the organization and there's there's a confidence in the new style of play would lead to more success and victories. 
and the thing with that is that it has to be a selfless style of play and teams such as the Hawks, Kings, and Pacers are expected to be suitors for either Siakam or Ananobi, but believe Siakam's, uh, all three teams rather have Siakam, but if they can't get Siakam, they rather, they're fine with OG Ananobi. Both Siakam and OG Ananobi are on expiring. Siakam's 29, he's in, he's makes 37.9, and he expects to get a max or a near max contract. Ananobi's 26, and he has a player option for 19.9, and he's expected to decline it and there's rumors that he's going to get a two-year max so siakam's expected to get near or close near close or a full max like through four or five year deal while ananobi might get like a two-year 70 million dollar deal they're saying and the hawks held intense conversations with the raptors surrounding a king's a siakam deal which i believe was deandre hunter aj griffin and Bogdan 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 Bogdanovich the package but the Pacers and Kings have kind of had like exploratory conversations while the Kings had a better start last year they're 12 and 8 this year compared to 11 and 9 last year so they're you know they're a good team so they're um, I kind of phrase that weird they had a better start this year than last year which is weird so Siakam kind of OG Ananobi is a better fit for the Kings. Siakam is a perfect fit for the Hawks and Pacers. The one thing I think OG became with Jalen Johnson's assertion, I think they kind of want OG now. So a season ago, the Raptors elected to play through and try to campaign and forge, you know, a playoff team, but they ultimately lost Fred Van Vliet to nothing. And the thing is, is that going to happen again? So there's a big belief that they, they've got to make a move there because right now, they don't have anything to show for it if he just leaves. Pascal Siakam has has been in discussions with the Atlanta Hawks, and the deal is that Atlanta is discussing with Pascal Siakam's agent and trying to figure out how willing would he be to sign an extension if the deal goes through. So basically, the whole hiccup on the Pascal Siakam deal right now is that the Hawks and Raptors, according to Mike Gra Michael Grange of Sportsnet, they have discussed various permeate permutations of a trade framework for pascal siakam this summer and with things advancing enough right now that atlanta has contacted pascal siakam's agent to measure how open pascal siakam would be to sign an extension with atlanta if the deal goes through the next report we're hearing specifically is that there is a according to league sources there is an expected to be a fairly robust market for the raptors veterans though maybe not the slam dunk of a return that makes the deal a no-brainer the raptors under president in general masai ujiri aren't known for selling low so the deal we knew that almost went through during this offseason was a deal of pascal siakam for deandre hunter bogdan bogdanovich aj griffin and i believe one first round pick they wanted Kobe Bufkin in the deal. The Hawks said no. Now, Bogdan's playing amazing this year. Okay, like amazing. He's been huge for them. Kobe Bufkin's been in the G. So, my question is, what would you give up if you were the Atlanta Hawks? If we knew the deal that they were cool with was DeAndre Hunter, AJ Griffin, and Bogdan Bogdanovich, one first round pick, and Kobe Bufkin on draft night, or which would now, I guess, would be two first round picks, AJ Griffin, Bogdan, DeAndre Hunter, but I don't want to give up Bogdan because I think he's playing too good. What would you do? So I get the idea of DeJounte Murray being involved in this deal, but let me come at you with this. Clint Capella, three team deal. Clint Capella and DeAndre Hunter, and AJ Griffin. You send DeAndre Hunter and AJ Griffin to the Raptors. You're like, okay, Clint Capella can't be going to the Raptors because they have Yaka Pertle. So I go, yeah, you know what team needs a center because their center's out for season? The Memphis Grizzlies. They've been saying that they want to trade Luke Kennard and John Conchar. So you package Luke Kennard, John Conchar to the to the Raptors. So the Raptors get DeAndre Hunter, AJ Griffin, Luke Kennard, and John Conchar, four players one first round pick and two second round picks. They send Pascal Siakam to the Hawks. Hawks get Pascal. They give up Mr. Clint Capella, DeAndre Hunter and AJ Griffin. And they get back Pascal. They'll give up one first round pick in two seconds. And then they send Clint Capella to the Hawks and the Hawks 
can send Luke Kennard and John Conchard over there. And if you're like to the to the I mean going to the Grizzlies. He's going to the Grizzlies because they don't have a center because Steven Adams is and then well. You're getting four players, a first round pick in two seconds, okay, with two of those players being starter caliber, two being good role players, all right? I really don't think it's that bad of a trade. 